from the US and good afternoon to people coming from the UK and uh, other European countries. We still have two minutes according to my clock anyway, until the official starting time. And because we have quite a few more people registered um, for this webinar, I hope you don't mind uh, waiting another few minutes. And I uh, hope I, I can share my, my camera as well so that you can actually uh, see a talking head as well. So as I said, welcome everybody. Uh, Good morning to people joining us from the US and uh, good afternoon to our participants uh, joining from European countries. Today's webinar is called How to Design Open Badges. And uh, I would like to keep it or, or make it as interactive as possible. But as you know, we only have one hour uh, for, for this uh, hands-on uh, activity or webinar. So we probably won't be able to do too much um, collaboration and uh, creative work. Uh, but hopefully you will still be able to get some useful tips. Um, many of you probably already know Eden. Uh, you participated some of the webinars before, but for those of you who don't, or those who will be just uh, reviewing the recording of this uh, webinar, uh, quickly, the European Distance and E-Learning Network is uh, the most comprehensive association of its kind uh, in Europe. Uh, we have been uh, registered and going since 1991. Our secretariat is now in uh, Hungary, uh, but uh, we are a UK-registered uh, organization. And our aim is to provide a platform for a professional collaboration and information exchange um, for our partners and our members. Uh, we are very inclusive. We, are, uh, have, we have members from every level and sector of education, uh, K-12, uh, higher education, adult education, vocational education and training. And our membership is open to institutions as well as individuals and larger networks and uh, national organizations. We are trying to organize um, uh, collaborative events uh, for our members and partners. These are face-to-face -face events, conferences and seminars, workshops, as well as uh, some virtual events like today's webinar, uh, for example. Uh, and uh, also try to uh, participate uh, in our uh, partners and members uh, EU funded projects uh, to support their research and practice and disseminate the, the information and the outputs of these uh, projects. And of course, uh, one thing that we are very keen on is to recognize professional excellence in this uh, very uh, agile area and uh, quickly uh, uh, changing uh, environment of uh, open education and distance and e-learning. So uh, the Open Badge Network, uh, the project uh, that is inevitable for us to, pre uh, to present uh, today's webinar, uh, is an, an EU-funded project. It's a Europe, uh, European Union Erasmus Plus uh, program-funded initiative. You see the URL to the uh, uh, project website uh, on the top of the, the slide. And uh, if you click there and uh, register uh, on the registration uh, link, I think it's on the uh, top right uh, side of the, the page, you will be able to enroll in a, a MOOC that will be a, a lot more uh, detailed uh, course for you, a non-formal course for, for you to, to truly learn how to design online uh, uh, open badges. As I said, today is just going to be a very, very quick uh, demonstration to give you a little bit of a teaser. The Open Badge Network is uh, supporting the development of uh, the Open Badge ecosystem. We are promoting the use of Open Badges and to recognize non-formal and informal learning. We have uh, a, a great uh, variety of uh, practical use cases on the website. If you would like to uh, feel uh, encouraged to um, copy somebody else's uh, examples or submit your own and get feedback from your peers, you're more than welcome to fill in the template or just to browse the existing uh, use cases. We have highly valuable discussion papers for individuals as well as organizations. You, the, 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 these are the papers where you can read about uh, the, the skeptical opinions about the, the use and the value of the open badges, as well as the successful uh, use cases at uh, different types of institutions and organizations. Uh, we have uh, discussion papers on, on uh, open badge policies. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, we are designing a MOOC. It's nearly ready. It will be piloted early next year. So please uh, don't forget to, to register there and uh, you will get uh, uh, information or uh, 
uh, heads off when we, we start the piloting. Why use open badges? Unfortunately, I can only supply uh, European statistics or, or, or data, but I am pretty sure it's the same situation uh, all over the world, and the US particularly, that uh, our jobs uh, in the near, near future, but definitely by 2020, 90% uh, of our jobs are going to require uh, digital skills or 21st century skills. And uh, in, in many cases, these skills are so much more important and valuable for, for people to get employed that uh, in many cases, uh, they may be considered uh, more important than uh, formal degrees. And uh, here we have a little quote uh, from the McKinsey uh, report, Education to Employment, Getting Europe's Youth into Work, according to which, Although 74% of the universities consider uh, that they are preparing their graduates uh, for the world of work, only 38% of their uh, graduates uh, agree with this, and only 35% uh, of the empl employers agree with this statement. And I wonder uh, if, uh, if you see the raise your hand uh, icon in the uh, top right corner of your, your uh, Adobe Connect uh, tool, I wonder if, if, if I could ask uh, our American participants to, to raise your hands if, if you are from the US, because I would like to ask someone to, to say whether they agree or, or disagree with this statement, or if it's the same situation in the US. Please feel free to just uh, leave a comment um, in the chat box if you prefer. But uh, as I said, I, I think I'm, I'm quite convinced that uh, it's, it's very much uh, the same situation in the US as well. Yeah, I don't see any hands, although I'm, I'm quite convinced that some of us are from the uh, US. Okay, don't be shy. Um, there we go, John. John, would you, would you like uh, the, the microphone and, and tell us where, where you're from and uh, what you know um, about uh, uh, the US situation, about uh, uh, employment and the use of Okay, no problem. Let's move on then. Uh, so the open badges, uh, why we like uh, using them is that because they're very versatile, very adaptable, they're also stackable. But what uh, differentiates uh, the open badges from just a standard CV where people can uh, list their skills and, and competences is they are standardized, uh, they are evidence-based, verifiable, portable and shareable. And uh, these agile uh, attributes uh, are really uh, differentiating open badges from uh, other types of uh, informal, non-formal credentials. And we in uh, the Open Badge Network believe that this is going to be um, a very strong way of micro-credentialing uh, informally and non-formally acquired uh, skills and competences. Um, I would also like to make uh, uh, a question, uh, ask a question to all of you before we get into the design. Can you please raise your hands if you are badge advocates? Uh, if those of you who, who, who like and believe in the, the value of open badges, can you please raise your hands? Just so that I know if I'm uh, talking to the converted or... Okay, that's very reassuring. Thank you so much. <laughs> you can lower your hands now and uh, if... Uh, are the, are the others uh, skeptics? Can you please raise your hand if you are not quite sure if the value of open badges is going to make them uh, um, some kind of a quality currency in the future? That's very reassuring. Or you're just very shy. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much. It's good to know that you, we are all believing in the, uh, the future of open badges. So let's move on to the design process. Um, as I said before, we are going to use digital means, the uh, badge design canvas, and uh, we are going to set uh, the criteria, or show you how to set the criteria, which is the heart and the key to the quality of the badges. Uh, those people who are uh, more skeptics uh, about badges, uh, most of the times they are uh, so because they have seen um, weaker uh, badges. Uh, badges are not just a, a pretty button that you uh, pin on the label of your jacket. Uh, it's a lot more sophisticated and, uh, and detailed than that. We will get back to that later. 
we will have to identify a, a badgeable skill, knowledge, or behavior. Uh, identify who our badges are for, or in this case, the badge that we are going to uh, design. Uh, have a value proposition for all the stakeholders, uh, earners, as well as the issuers, the audience, and displayer. Uh, think about the learning pathways. Uh, not forget about the resources uh, that are necessary for the design of the badges and sustainability, the future uh, of, of your, your badges and your badge ecosystem or portfolio. And the fun part, of course, is the graphical design at the end, but that always comes at the end once you already have the, um, the whole uh, concept. <clears throat> As I said earlier, what makes a badge? Um, I don't know how much you can see uh, the slides. They, they may look pretty small, but and in theory, on the, uh, the top right corner of, of the slide box, you see an icon with four arrows pointing to the, the corners of the square. If you click on that button, it will enlarge the slides, and uh, you will be able to read them. But it's probably not very necessary, and uh, you may prefer to just read the, the chat um, um, during the presentation. But what I was uh, going to say is that uh, the badge is not just a badge image. There's a lot of metadata behind it, as you probably already know. This is about 90% uh, of the uh, the badge content that is not visual and that's behind uh, the, the pretty face. Um, and now let's move on to the badge that we are going to design today. Uh, this is the badge that you're going to receive uh, after the, today, this week, uh, your webinar participant badge. And this is how it looks uh, in the tool uh, that we use to design and issue our own badges. So the, there is the, uh, the image uh, about the, the badge. It has a title or a name. There's a short description. You can uh, see who has issued it and click on the, the links uh, of the, the issuer organization. Uh, there's a contact uh, uh, email address. And uh, there are evidences uh, uh, behind that badge, like here, uh, the resources section um, gives you access to the presentation slides and the webinar recording. Um, it always has an issuing date and sometimes also an expiration date. Maybe, um, depending on what kind of badge you designed and issued, and a, a couple of tags, a few tags uh, that you can use uh, to, to make your badges uh, more broadly recognized if it's uh, freely accessible on the internet. Uh, about the versatility of the badges, uh, people usually mention the, the scouts badges and the, the army uh, badges, we all know those. But in fact, it's not uncommon at all, and you probably all know uh, digital uh, badges as well. Uh, many of these uh, you probably uh, recognize uh, from this screen, others you don't. Um, I, I wanted to include uh, several different types that you may be familiar with or that may, that would uh, probably increase your, your trust in the value of badges. I would say if uh, B the BBC and Siemens uh, are using open badges, then they probably uh, uh, have the expertise and the know-how to, to uh, bat safely on, on this innovation. But it could be anything, as uh, you know, in gaming there are badges. Um, even even a, a barista could get a badge for being able to make a, a, a flat white. So there's there's a very very wide scale of uh, using uh, open badges. So this is uh, how the uh, open badge uh, canvas uh, design canvas looks like, and we're going to go through these uh, boxes. Uh, and uh, fill in with the information about our badge, the uh, webinar participant badge. But I, what I would also like you to do, uh, just I will pause for a moment and uh, think about what badge you might want to design for yourself. If you had uh, not one, but three hours, because it is quite a lengthy procedure. Uh, and you, if, if we were in a face-to-face -face situation, I would probably sit you in, in groups of uh, three or four and uh, ask you to come up with a, an idea of a badge and, and work on the canvas together. But we don't have that time. So maybe next time or when you um, uh, review the video recording, you could just get a printout of the canvas in front of you, pause the video when you get to the different points and fill it in for yourself. So um, I wonder if you could uh, just tell me or uh, write in the chat box if you came prepared with an idea of what you would like to badge. I 
see people typing. That's very good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Reaching various points, point totals in online course. Employability skills, very good. Let's remember that because we'll get back to that a bit later, the employability skills. Mm -hmm. Creating short animated films for learning. That's very good as well. I mean, I'll, I'll get back to that later as well when we come to the evidences. Okay, Keep, continue typing if you wish. Um, but as I said, we are going to pretend that we just came up with the idea of uh, badging your webinar participation. So um, this is not a cheat, obviously, the, the image came after the concept, but uh, just so that you can have the, the final goal in front of your eyes, this is the, the final look, the surface of the badge we are going to design the webinar participant. So we have to think about the audience and the value of our badge. Who is this badge for? This is for you, the, the professionals who don't necessarily require formal recognition uh, of their learning. You're quite happy to just have some kind of informal um, uh, certification or notification of uh, your attendance. But you probably would appreciate to have some kind of recognition for you devoting a whole hour of your time uh, to, to sit through this uh, presentation. Uh, the badge issuer is obviously the webinar organizer, which is Eden. Um, the audience, the consumer, these terms are, are uh, important to be able to differentiate uh, between, is um, the, the, the person or the organization who is looking at the badge that you have earned. So once you display the badge, you don't have to. If, if you don't think that uh, a badge that you were uh, issued is not valuable for yourself, um, you can just hide it uh, in your uh, Mozilla backpack. But if you think that one uh, batch has a particular value because uh, there's a very solid evidence um, in, in the, be, behind the badge, then you, you may want to, to showcase that to either your prospective employer when you're applying for a job, uh, to, to show it to your peers, to, to show it your, to your colleagues or your department, so that people have a point of reference as of uh, what, what you are capable of doing that they don't. For example, in this case, if you learn how to uh, create and issue uh, open badges, uh, some of your colleagues uh, may think, oh, that's interesting. If I have a question related to that, I know whom to turn to. Uh, <clears throat> so the opportunities uh, that uh, badges can unlock um, that some of you may be familiar with is uh, a new way of uh, considering continuous professional development. Uh, when you uh, can mark the, the milestones of your progress or, or when you have evidence of, uh, of your informal um, and volunteering uh, activities, it's, uh, it's, it's very nice to, to see that kind of a, a map of your achievements or your plans. Uh, you may uh, uh, take notice uh, of badges that you just uh, would like to pursue in the future and come back to later when you have time to, uh, to learn something new. Um, you, you may also be able to identify your skill gaps if you see a collection of badges, for instance, about uh, your digital competences and you do a self-evaluation test, you may recognize that although you might, might be strong in certain areas, you might be not so strong in, in other areas. Another EU project of ours that is called uh, LN for Work, uh, it's actually studying and researches exactly that. And what that project is doing is uh, uh, lets you go through a self-evaluation questionnaire. And once you identify your, your uh, skill gaps, it will offer you MOOCs and other uh, open educational resources to, to learn to improve uh, those weaker skills. Um, uh, it's a very creative uh, way and a flexible way of organizing uh, your non-academic and informal achievements. As I said before, uh, it's one thing to put on your CV that you're an excellent team worker or, or a great presenter, but there's not a solider evidence than uh, showing a video of, of your presentation um, uh, behind a badge. So if your prospective employer is interested at your presentation skill, uh, they can just click on the badge 
and then within that uh, on the link and see see your presentation slides or see the recording of your presentation, etc. Um, you can also cluster similar achievements if you're a big uh, webinar goer. Uh, you may be able to showcase uh, 10, 20 webinar uh, participation badges so that uh, people who are uh, reviewing your, your skills and interests might notice that you are very good at uh, and very determined to continuously improve yourself professionally. And where does a user find out uh, about the badges? It could be the Eden website, uh, where we uh, talk about the, the recognition of professional excellence. It could be partner communications, in, in this case, uh, uh, communications from USDLA or the Open Badge Network project. Uh, there are conference and seminar presentations uh, that could channel people to uh, the badges and the courses. Um, there, there could be open badge databases. There are several of these. These are where, for instance, uh, if, if you would like to learn something and you look in a, a, a badge database, for example, uh, coding or how to write a CV or how to uh, apply for uh, certain types of funds, and uh, you can you can find the badge for that, and probably behind that badge there's a there's a link to a course that you can complete to uh, to get that to earn that badge. Uh, and you also find um, uh, open badge uh, the the endorsers endorsers who who already uh, promote these badges. Um, why bother earning uh, earning the badge? Uh, it's a it's a it's a sense of achievement, and it, it builds your confidence when you know that you get something. I don't know how many of you have small children, but uh, if, if you remember the, the face of your child when they come home with a sticker on their chest, they are just so happy. And uh, us adults are not that much different um, from this point of view. So I think the confidence building and the sense of achievement may be very important. Again, uh, please remember that it's not just uh, hoarding all kinds of stuff. You have to apply critical thinking to what badges have value and what not, but I think you know what I mean. Um, informal but official recognition of achievement. If you have a LinkedIn profile and you have ever been endorsed for a skill that you actually don't possess, uh, you know what I mean when I say that uh, endorsing badges uh, and uh, get the peer recognition that way can be so much more powerful because you are actually showcasing skills that you can prove you, you possess. And then if people say, Yes, indeed, this people is very good at open badge design because we have worked together and you get the thumbs up on, on that uh, evidence skill, not just a, a made up one. And you also have a point of reference uh, and evidence to new knowledge, skills and achievements. So you don't forget, maybe in uh, two years time, you won't remember a one hour webinar that you attended. But if you have your badge backpack uh, where, where you can see in a certain cluster or collection uh, your short trainings, you will be able to recall uh, these smaller achievements and, uh, and events. The, for the issuer, recognizing excellence, I think it's very important. From many of the examples that you put in the chat box, I think uh, you, you find it important to, to award these badges to the people who, who, whose employment employability skills you would like to uh, endorse, uh, those people who uh, you would like to empower, that they are able to create those uh, short animated films etc. Uh, you can make your brand uh, more uh, wider known uh, by uh, avoiding these badges and these badges appearing in people's CVs, on their LinkedIn profile, in their e-portfolio. And if it's a, a strong badge or can be seen many times, uh, other viewers uh, might uh, click on these links and get to know you, your institution, your community, uh, your volunteer group, uh, etc. It may be an incentive for modernization. Uh, like in case of Eden, we are very happy to be able to say that we were pioneers and one of the first uh, to, to try to um, use uh, open badges for recognition of informal uh, learning and uh, to raise interest. Um, um, if, if, if you see it out there, then you will ask what it is. The audience, the consumers, uh, again, awareness of the initiative, uh, identifying uh, the, the interest of the person. So if uh, your prospective employer looks at your badge backpack or your CV or LinkedIn profile with the badges, they will certainly be able to identify your professional interest, uh, where, how, how you're developing yourself, what's your niche of research, for example, or practice, and, uh, and often, uh, this could be this could uh, be a, a big difference. Like 
if you're applying for a job, um, I think I, I, I spoke enough. There's there's uh, room here to ask another question. Um, has any of you uh, have to, ever had to interview uh, someone for a, a role or a position within your institution or organization? Can you please raise your hand? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I won't make you have to speak, but you can, you can comment in the chat box. What I would like to know is how often did you put uh, very much significance on the, the formal qualification and the degree and the grades, and how often did you look for soft skills when you were interviewing a person? How, how much more important, or is it more important to, to have to employ someone who has a, a strong uh, degree um, from a very reputable uh, university, for example, or would you rather have someone who is uh, adaptable and creative and has the soft skills? Mm -hmm. Depends a bit on the jobs, certainly. That's the, the example of the heart surgeon. That obviously, it's very important for, for certain jobs, particularly technical ones, that the, the hard skills and the experience and the qualification is there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. OK. Meanwhile, uh, the displayer, what's in it for the displayer? By displayer, we mean uh, LinkedIn. Uh, your institutional Moodle, the e-portfolios, websites, etc. For them, it is the reputation that uh, you you go to them to to store and display uh, your badges. Uh, they um, they strive to build a community around certain clusters of skills and badges. Uh, they they want to um, enforce uh, loyalty in their community. So uh, you you obviously need to keep in mind when you're designing your badge. Uh, whether you uh, fulfill these needs of, of the displayer as well when you create your badges. And again, just for a tiny moment to go back to the issuer, what's in it. I mentioned the value recognition, but I would also like to point out the, the statistical records, uh, for example, of the acceptance rate. Uh, since we started using open badges at Eden, uh, we have already noticed which ones of our badges are more valuable from the point of view of the higher acceptance rate and which ones are the less valuable if you like. Uh, as I said before, uh, the, the quality is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, so it's, it may be a different quality that is required by one user or earner and by another, uh, but you can probably get a better acceptance rate if your, your uh, badge is well designed for the, the stakeholders you are, you are targeting. And uh, widening uh, the brand and service recognition, as I said uh, uh, before, if our participant badges are all over the world, then uh, Eden will get noticed. And so will your organization. Skills, knowledge, competences, and behaviors. Very quickly, what you have. So if, if I give you a, a webinar participant badge, OK, so what? But if you look into the actual skills, knowledge, competences, and behaviors that it demonstrates, it might uh, suddenly get a, a bit greater value when, when your skill, like when your badge means to the viewer or the consumer that you have the ability to, to learn uh, in an informal, non-formal way, that you demonstrate your professional commitment to, to learn informally and participate in uh, webinars. If you have the curiosity and openness to innovation, to check out new things, if you have the independence to, to manage your learning and fit in that one hour to attend a, a webinar, as I said, if we had a face-to-face -face event, you would sit together in smaller groups and you would uh, practice your collaboration and teamwork skills, as well as your communication, as well as your critical thinking, what works, what doesn't, and maybe specific uh, knowledge, skill, or ability to design a badge or to to uh, create an animated uh, video, uh, these kind of things. So think about these when you go through the, uh, the canvas uh, filling. Okay. And evidence. Uh, if uh, Krista said the, uh, the animated videos, if you 
award uh, a, a video uh, or animation creation badge uh, to people who uh, go through um, a course or a similar webinar than this one. And by the end of the course, they are able to create a short video. Then they could just put it up on a YouTube uh, um, account and share the link. So on one hand, uh, some of the evidence is coming from the issuer. Like in, in the webinar's case, uh, Eden will be putting some of the background information, the metadata behind the badge, and it will say that uh, this person has attended. It's, it's proven that I will go through the list of the registrations, I will go through the list of the participants here in the uh, Adobe Connect room, and those registered people who have not attended, they are not going to receive the badge. But uh, this is something that I have to do to be able to keep the value, to, to be able to say confidently that it's only those people who have sat through attentively this one hour who received this uh, badge. Of course, you can always cheat. Uh, there may be someone who just logged in and went to have a coffee or not paying attention or multitasking and not picking up everything. But you do the same thing when you're writing your CV. So it's, it's really up to your discipline um, and uh, what matters is that uh, we have faith in uh, the, the people who try to demonstrate uh, their skills and competences. There could be a self-assessment test. If you are um, uh, trying to, somebody, somebody said that it's, uh, that uh, to, to collect, I, let me check on the two quotes uh, from the chat box. Um, reaching various point totals in course in, in online course. Uh, this is if, if you can demonstrate and connect uh, uh, these uh, with the and, and prove uh, in the badge that you have received those points, that's an evidence. Uh, completion uh, of task, again, as I said, if, if there's, a, there's a coursework by the end of which uh, you have an assignment that you submitted and you can create a PDF and upload it, that's that's a perfect evidence. Uh, or publishing results, uh, pretty much the same thing. And endorsements, uh, we also discussed that uh, you may receive a badge uh, for, for something that you have done, but then later on you may have done something similar and the people you were in touch with uh, collaborating uh, and demonstrating the same skill could go back to that one badge and without issuing you another one say, Yes, this skill is valid. Uh, we have done something similar together, and the pers person clearly demonstrated their ability to, for example, design an open badge. Then the learning pathways uh, that you also are recommended to uh, consider is before you get started, map your learning offering. You want to see the big picture, and you want to organize uh, your learning offering because if you zoom in on a single Thing just to experiment, it will you will have to undo the whole thing and start again. So uh, the first thing you do is start from uh, a couple of steps uh, back and and then zoom in on on the one uh, example that you would like to further elaborate. Consider your options for improvement and expansion. Um, that, for example, if you if you can badge uh, one course or if you can badge one type of activity or a a, a skill. Um, how can you how can you uh, do or or uh, adapt that to to other uh, learning um, uh, circumstances? Um, there are different types of badges, like type pie type badges. Uh, if you imagine a, a pie of several slices, uh, maybe you would like to badge something big, but that big is not that tangible. So you would say, okay, this great, complex, sophisticated uh, competency consists of several different skills. And if you can, for example, demonstrate your communication skills or presentation skills, your leadership skills, your whatever, that all together becomes a, a mega skill or something. You can also do level up uh, badges. Uh, when you have bronze, silver, or gold, this could be based on the, the performance uh, and the results or uh, stacking up uh, similar type badges. Like if you have attended 10 Eden uh, webinars, then you will get a bronze or silver or, or gold uh, badge and people will know that you are, instead of uh, displaying 10, 15, 20 badges, you will display that one single uh, gold behind which uh, there's that stacked uh, multiple badges. And um, connect with par parallel relevant external learning resources. If you have any, you should be able to link them in, in your uh, criteria list and evidence list. 
and allow learners and prospective uh, badge earners to explore and engage. If you have a greater uh, portfolio, for example, we heard uh, uh, earlier today in the other uh, uh, webinar that uh, migrants in Europe um, uh, would be uh, are, are a very important target audience uh, at the moment to uh, to teach to uh, fit in to to find new jobs to translate uh, their their um, qualifications we see that home into the European uh, uh, language if you like uh, for them to be able to see what's on offer and how they can engage with uh, uh, online courses formal or informal uh, this is your own interest uh, to to be able to be found uh, by your uh, target audiences and as always this is most important to be creative and adaptable and consult consult with your peers consult with your audiences do your focus group uh, that will help you uh, save uh, failure time and uh, and uh, uh, the dead end uh, roots in your your work um, Uh, regarding the size of a badge, are there any rules and good practice around how big uh, a chunk of a pie should be? Uh, no. Uh, that's, that's the brilliance, in my opinion, of open badges, is that they are so um, adaptable and versatile. It's really up to you. How much do you think uh, what, what you are offering or what you are uh, micro-credentialing uh, is, is worth? Um, is it something that has uh, relevance uh, in a certain professional community, even if it's a tiny thing? Um, is it like uh, if, if you're at a university, if you're, you're a university lecturer or practitioner, um, is it going to be a series of courses that stack up at the end of the uh, uh, curriculum as a degree? Or would, it be, would the pie be the course or the degree? Would the, would the pie be uh, a series of uh, um, digital skills? Uh, it's, it's really up to you. This is why you, you really have to do your research and, and find out what you're aiming to uh, achieve with your badges so that it has value to yourself and your badge owners. owners. We're nearly there at the end. <laughs> promise that there are only two slides left. Uh, Okay, I think uh, Krista would like to uh, say something. The, do you have a microphone? No? Okay, sorry. Karen? Uh, I see a, a green tick mark next to your name. Would you like to get the microphone? Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. We still have we, we still have plenty of time. Uh, so resources and sustainability very important. You don't want to invest a lot of time into something that doesn't take off. Um, so what you would like to consider. Uh, that you have to invest into this process is uh, you do have to um, devote some time and save some uh, time for the concept development. And that uh, partly is the, the filling in of the canvas. And although this canvas is super simple because it has to be adaptable to all these different types of uh, learning and badging, uh, because as, as I said, it could be something formal uh, education related it could be something that is a practical skill like uh, the flat white uh, barista it could be something like a, a nurse's skill it could be something like a, a digital competence and uh, this uh, canvas should be able to uh, guide you through the design process uh, whatever type of badge you're designing and I didn't say this before but obviously there are lots of other guidelines available online uh, we use the uh, Digital Me's um, uh, Open Batch Design Canvas because they are uh, one of the project partners and they could um, introduce this tool to us and we are very familiar with it and it works. But you can use any guidelines and maybe even experiment uh, with the batch design uh, process uh, on your own. Uh, I mentioned before that you have to align with the curriculum or competency framework, and this is where I would like to come back to that point uh, raised in the chat box earlier. 
that, for example, in, in Europe we have um, uh, lots of competency frameworks. And uh, my impression since I think it was two weeks ago that uh, we attended Mozilla's MOSFEST uh, in, in uh, London, Greenwich, and uh, one of the outcomes of the, the festival or the conference um, on the open badge floor was that uh, there's, there's an initiative to connect uh, open badges uh, with the competency frameworks. So if you already have a well-developed uh, framework of competencies and skills, and often these are super, super complex, like um, for, for different types of tradesmen, for example, or different types of uh, professions. I mentioned the nurses before, but it, the, the same applies to carpenters or the, the digi comp, uh, uh, digital uh, competences. And some um, official bodies are working uh, to, to develop these uh, frameworks so that they are uh, complex and comprehensive. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you know what you're working with and what you aspire to, to connect your badges with, it only gives credit to your, your badge if you are able to say that this badge uh, is uh, demonstrating this and this and this and this skill and competence that is defined like this. So if you have a clear definition of what you mean by uh, digital information processing or uh, uh, internet safety, because you can get the definition from the framework or you can get the, the, the scales or the, the levels of proficiency uh, from an official framework that defines what makes a certain level that level, then that gives an, an amazing amount of uh, credibility and, and value and, uh, and, and credit uh, to, your, to your badge. Needless to say, you have to have the time and the skills to design your badge. Uh, maybe you are creative and you can scribble something or you know how to use Adobe Photoshop or some other kind of graphical design uh, software, you might be resourceful enough to, to find um, or buy images uh, online. There are a lot of icon finder uh, websites uh, from where, which uh, you can uh, download entire sets of different, different types of uh, icons that you could use uh, to, to uh, develop your, uh, the graphical uh, or the visual uh, images of your badges. You might just want to hire someone to do that. And actually, many of the badge designing uh, software or tools or platforms um, allow you to create your open badges. I think in the useful resources, uh, uh, there is in the bottom uh, left corner, there is a link um, to, to a platform where you can actually choose from a very limited number of shapes and forms and colors. But it would probably give you a good enough idea how to create a badge, and if you're just experimenting, it's probably more than enough to, to see how a badge would look like at the end. Um, also, the, the same platforms or similar platforms are available to uh, create and issue the badges. And uh, you have to, um, you decide whether you want to invest into membership uh, or, or uh, of these platforms or issue manually. That's probably depending on how many people and how frequently you're issuing your badges that could be extremely time consuming to uh, attach the uh, JPEG or PNG file to your emails and make sure that they are not being used by somebody else. Um, the, the, the badges that are issued through these uh, uh, professional uh, platforms are really safe and uh, uh, there, it's, it's not possible to claim badges unless uh, you are the actual earner um, of the badge. Uh, but this usually uh, costs money. Um, you have to have time or uh, devote time to uh, create support material uh, for your badges. Uh, as I said, the, the, the evidence uh, background and the metadata. Uh, to create issue and reissue the individual badges, you might have the webinar participant badge available. But for every single webinar you're organizing, the, the background is going to be different because it's a different uh, slideshow, it's a different webinar recording, it's a different subject, etc. So the picture might be the same, but you have to rephrase uh, the metadata and uh, change your tags and, uh, and change the, the resources. And I mentioned before, to evolve your open batch portfolio, uh, once you get started, you will probably get uh, new ideas and you just uh, keep going and for for the webinar participant, you will do the webinar facilitator. That's a whole different range of skills that uh, it demonstrates. Uh, you, you would move to 
face-to-face uh, -face event, you might want to change the color and uh, have uh, subsections of different types of webinars, etc. I'm not going to go into it because uh, you, you have your own ideas and you just be creative, be free. Uh, this is just uh, an example of uh, how our um, badge, badge one badge uh, looks like. And what I really appreciate about this uh, sophisticated platform is that it shows you for example, not just how the, the badge looks like, but also how many times you issued this badge and how many people accepted the badge and how many did not. Uh, you, you see the five stars rating. That's another brilliant thing that uh, the earners can actually say that this is a useful badge. So on the basis of the number and the, the, the storage of your uh, feedback and the acceptance rate, uh, you can gauge uh, the value of, of the, your selection of badges. And uh, that's it. it uh, at the end, there are the, the resources uh, that you I already put into the note box. So feel free to, to visit any one of these sites now or, or later. And uh, this is the time when I will let you uh, have further questions and maybe uh, recap the, the chat box. I don't know if I missed anything important while I was speaking. Uh, Ferenc has a question. If you receive uh, badges from different issuers, how will they be comparable, how they uh, fit together? I don't know if um, who of you has um, a, a Mozilla backpack. Would you raise your hand if you have a Mozilla backpack? OK. That's not as good as I thought. Hopefully, you're still all with me. Um, if you have an, uh, a backpack or a, a passport or, or any uh, platform where you uh, collect your badges, uh, that doesn't differentiate. So you have a whole range of badges that you have been issued by, um, by many people, many organizations, and you decide how, to cluster, how you cluster them. So if you have uh, event participation badges uh, from different issuers, you can just keep them in an event block. And then the comparability factor is up to you and uh, the, the badge consumer, your, your peers, your employer, your prospective employer. If they, want, if, if they receive a link to your collection, that may be uh, 10 badges or 5 badges from your collection, big, big collection of 100, they will be able to uh, tell themselves uh, what the quality is for them and uh, how comparable they are. Absolutely. The way it looks, and I'll, I wonder, it, I, sh I should have thought about it earlier to just um, open my backpack and uh, share my screen. But let me see if I can still do that. Looks like I can log in. If I remember my password. OK. Looks like I'm maybe in. OK. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, stop sharing and share my screen. I won't be able to see you, but hopefully you will be able to see my screen. Uh, so this is. This is all my badges uh, that are um, in this um, Mozilla backpack. I must say that I don't have all of them here. I, I have um, an open badge passport. But here is the important thing, the collections. I will get there, yeah. So you can create as many collections as you like. Uh, you just drag your badges very, very simple and straightforward, and uh, call it participant. There you go. And then you click public, and then it goes public, and then you just get a link to share, add it to your CV, done. Excellent. 
So, um, so this this is the the simple uh, demonstration of how how it's done. But you can have multiple uh, collections, and they one could be about uh, certain skills or volunteering or professional development. Back to where we were. Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Debbie. Very good question about the uh, uh, if there's any research evidence yet on how employers view or if they value or recognize badges. Um, we're working on it. Uh, I mentioned um, I mentioned the uh, LN for Work um, project that is actually uh, organizing or has organized focus groups and uh, did a, a desk research about uh, the, the employers and the, the graduates or the job seekers um, uh, valuation or uh, of, of uh, soft skills. But that project is not dealing with open badges. And there's a, the Open Badge Network uh, project is uh, is more focusing on uh, just mainstreaming uh, the use of open badges. Uh, we are, as since I don't know a few months ago, working on connecting the two two projects and see how it works. Because in practical terms, I have to say the employers are very slow to catch up. But if you remember the slides uh, from before, I lost them somehow. But um, I go back to. Um, the versatility of the badges, you do see that particularly in IT, it's uh, where so many things are happening digitally and online anyway, uh, those employers are, are particularly appreciative of uh, online achievement. And if uh, somebody is a, a, a regular supporter or answers to uh, coding questions or programming questions, that gets recognized at those uh, employers. Uh, here you see there's uh, the BBC, Siemens, uh, uh, NHS um, uh, from from the UK, uh, O2, uh, who and, and even uh, European uh, bodies are exploring um, the use of open badges. I think it's just like the gunslingers. Everybody's waiting who's who's moving first and and how credible it is. Uh, I think we are just about to to uh, come down from the Gardner Cycles hype, and uh, people will just uh, begin to appreciate uh, quality badges. And once that takes off, and there will be uh, enough employers uh, uh, showing the, the good examples, uh, the others will uh, quickly follow. But uh, that has to mean that uh, employers change their practices. But if it is true what the, the research uh, says here, that um, uh, soft skills are so important, and the employers uh, disagree uh, with the statement that universities consider uh, their graduates to be uh, fit for the world of work. There has to be something has to happen that brings uh, the two stakeholder uh, sectors closer to each other. And uh, I think uh, badges are a great means to to facilitate that because they're so uh, diverse and adaptable and um, and and standard. I think the key is standardized and evidence-based. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Debbie, I think I may have to issue you a facilitator badge as well, because you've been tremendously helpful uh, throughout the, uh, the webinar. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Or comment? Do you think you would be able able to design a badge? Uh, has the past one hour been uh, useful at all? I don't, I'm not sure if I should look, but <laughs> that's excellent. Thank you very much. Okay then. Um, Oh, super. Yes, uh, 
the canvas as well as this presentation, as you can see on the first slide, a creative comments, uh, feel free to, to reuse and redistribute and everything. So um, if you have any questions, you, you may have seen um, my um, email if you, you registered. If not, again, here's the link uh, to the registration um, form on Google. If you would like to receive your participant badge and you haven't uh, registered for this webinar before, please share your email and uh, and get in touch with me if, if you have any further questions or comments and I'll either answer that myself or I will just pass your inquiries on to my colleagues who are more knowledgeable than me. Excellent. Well, find me on LinkedIn. Here, here it is. That's me. OK, then, uh, well, we started two minutes late. Now it's two minutes early to the official uh, finish. If you don't have any questions, then uh, I wish you all uh, a very nice uh, day for the American uh, participants. And uh, good evening to the Europeans. Thank you very much for spending this one hour with me. Uh, you'll receive the link to the recording, so feel free to uh, watch it again and uh, continue working on your canvases. And absolutely the best of luck with uh, your, your badges. Share, share, with your success, share your success stories with, with us uh, on the Open Badge Network website. Bye. <laughs>